This is Tim McAuliffe, and you're listening to Vibe 105. Vibe Talks. Vibe Talks. More than just music. Hey, everybody. This is John Carlo Alino reporting for Vibe 105 with a sports Vibe talk segment. We're going to be talking about all things sports and uh, get some aspects on the play-by-play side of things. Tell me out today. I'm happy to be joined by my guest. He's an expert in this area. You can hear him edutaining the masses on Sportsnet weekdays with Tim and Sid. He's Tim McAuliffe. Tim, welcome back to Vibe 105. Thank you, Giancarlo. Good to be back. Now, Tim, with this... Uh, dead expert, whole though. Dead expert. I, 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 I'm a little scared of that, but I'll try and live up to the billing. I'm going to be honest with you. <laughs> uh, first of all, just before we get started, uh, this whole pandemic, like, how are you doing? How's your family doing during this difficult time? Yeah, thanks a lot for asking. We're, we're doing okay. Um, Mom and dad are still doing okay. Uh, immediate family, knock on wood, is doing good. And I, I hope all the listeners out there are doing uh, doing the same. I know there's a lot of people uh, suffering right now. I know there's a lot of uh, frontline workers doing absolutely ridiculous work, uh, essential workers from everyone from posties to grocers. Uh, I can't believe the strength and sacrifice that I'm seeing around the world. So a shout out to them and everything that they're doing right now to allow my family the privilege of staying home and staying healthy. So uh, a definite thanks to them for uh, for carrying the load right now while the rest of us try and do our part by just staying out of their way. Yeah, well said. I echo those same sentiments there to first responders, frontline workers listening to this right now. Uh, Tim, you know, like it's been a little over a month since we haven't had sports on, all the league suspending play and all that. So how has this have impacted and affected your show on Sportsnet? Uh, I think, I mean, obviously doing a three-hour show, a uh, three-hour sports show with no sports can have its... Uh, can have its challenges, uh, but we we kind of took it outside sports a lot before, and I feel like what it's turned into, at least in the short term, has been like real conversations, which I think we always tried to have about what we're going through and what the sports world is going through and how we're adapting and how athletes are adapting and how broadcasters are adapting, and hopefully that's relatable to uh, the average Joe or the, you know, I don't know if there is a, such thing as an average Joe right now, but anyone who's listening, we understand that there's, you know, from your kids not being able to play sports anymore, to keeping them busy, to keeping ourselves busy. I think we've just tried to have, uh, we used to call it hashtag real talk on the show, but just real talk about what we're going through and doing it with a variety of guests, whether they be celebrities that we've met along the way through music or um, athletes or coaches or other broadcasters. We're just trying to have conversation that would draw people in and and maybe have them relate to what we're going through and what you're going through and what we're seeing in the world right now. Yeah, and also, like, on this side of things, now that you're changing the way, like, you have to broadcast a little bit with all these leagues, though, when you're looking at the timetable and just how the climate is right now with this thing, should these leagues even resume play or should they just cancel the seasons and move on? I think uh, I think there's no need to cancel the seasons right now, and I only say that because if you get there, you get there. Yeah. The world has changed uh, month by month, week by week, and day by day. I think here in North America, we have the benefit of looking across to Korea, see how they're doing it. Uh, looking across to Italy and Spain, who have been hit very hard, and see how they're doing it. Like I know the United States loves to take uh, the lead on a lot of things, but given the timetable and the way this crossed the earth, we're we're in a, a benefit. We, there's a benefit to being kind of the last continent to be hit is that you can learn from other people and i think that right now that's the way sports has to look if you're a commissioner of the league you have to look at plan a b c all the way to z and i get it and that's where we're hearing all of these stories about when they put where they'll put how they'll put but i think there's a there's a definite timeline and the timeline starts maybe with korea because i'm not sure that we can trust what's coming out of china right now but you could probably start with Korea, who's done a pretty good job in limiting COVID-19. Uh, and then Italy and Spain, who struggled with it. But you know they want to get back to their to their soccer seasons. Uh, you know they want to get back to their sports. See how they do it. See what works for them. There's, there is absolutely no need to be first in all this. And I think patience is going to be needed by everybody. And I know that's hard to say, because if you had told me two months ago that I would be stuck in my house for a month, 
I would have told you I couldn't do it. But here we are. I'm doing okay. A lot of us are doing better than we ever thought we would do. So the patience that it's taken us to get to this point, I think we need to apply to sports because people need to be healthy. People need to be safe before we even contemplate sports. And I know I make my career doing that. So, you know, if anyone wanted this to go quickly, it's probably the dude doing three hours of a sports show without sports. But I, I think we need to sit back, wait, and watch what the rest of the world does and learn from it. Yeah, and about commissioners coming out and hoping to, you know, get things going a little bit. Like Gary Bettman came out and he was saying, if there's an opportunity that presents itself, they'd like to resume. Uh, North Dakota has been one state that could be a possibility. Uh, if the NHL were to resume, though, and the NBA, should they look at maybe uh, this as a time to experiment a little bit, maybe with a single elimination tournament for the NBA playoffs, Stanley Cup, and have it like a two-week thing for both so like that it doesn't postpone next season guaranteed that if it comes back as a continuation of the year that we paused it'll be with empty stands it'll be with a lot of experimentation and i'm not sure it'll be single elimination i'm not sure it'll be a five game series or even a three game series in the nba or the nhl but i can guarantee bleep and tee you that it'll be with empty stands and that it'll be uh with a lot of experimentation and that could be with the way games are viewed how they're filmed, what they're filmed with, uh, robotic cameras, uh, that's a possibility. There's possibilities where you can have people in other areas filming the game, commentating on the game. There's a lot of things that we're figuring out. I, I feel like we may not reinvent the wheel right now, but we may reinvent the way we do things. That's technologically and with uh, the way we're looking at what we see professional sports as. I think there's going to be a drastic change early, and I, I pray to God that it returns to the way that we once understood it, but I don't know how long that's going to take. I'll leave that to the epidemiologists to figure out. I'll leave that to the people who have spent their whole lives trying to figure it out. But if it does come back, I think fans have to be ready for something different and if you're not ready for something different, you're going to be disappointed. So just get ready for whatever it's going to be. Have an open mind. And I think we might, like, listen, the first time the XFL came around, everyone was laughing at it. And then the NFL took a couple of ideas that worked really well and implemented them. I think we have to look at whatever way sports comes back similarly. And that is use it as a time to try and figure out some things that we may never have figured out. And it might be fun that way. But if you're expecting it to be what it was, I think you're just going to be disappointed. And if they do, like, there's going to be a lot of experimentation, like you said there. So would it put an asterisk beside a champion? Like already the Raptors had that last year when they beat an injured Golden State team. Let's say LeBron were to win with the Lakers. And you know how some fans are when it comes to LeBron James. Do you think that would put a negative asterisk the way people remember a championship? Yeah, there will be asterisks, but who cares? That's part of the fun. Like I would argue, I would argue with you on the Raptors asterisks. And that's, like for me and, and the way I look at sports, the debate is half the fun. The, yeah. the chat is half the fun. The, the going back and forth with your boys uh, is half the fun. Uh, having your wife say, that doesn't work out, or having your girlfriend say, that's not, that's not a real win, and is part of the fun of why we uh, who love sports kind of, you know, it's, we're all filling time between games, and all that stuff is what we do to fill time between the games. So uh, I, um, again, embrace it because that's what it's going to be. And if the argument ends up being LeBron winning an NBA title in a single elimination tournament, uh, let the festivities begin on where that puts him against Michael in the all-time conversation. Like that's, I, I'm, I'm, I'm actually looking forward to stuff like that, and I think that'll be fun. For those just joining us here on Vibe 105, this is John Carlo Lino with a Sports Vibe Talk segment joined by Tim McAuliffe from Tim and Sid. Uh, Tim, uh, another thing that got fans bummed out about was Vince Carter's final game in Toronto, which was supposed to happen last week. Uh, this was his final season, and uh, a lot of people were thinking maybe Vince Carter would have been celebrated for his time in the league. Now with his career obviously going to be done, what do you think his legacy will be remembered as a Raptor and uh, as an NBA player? I think uh, I think his I mean his legacy is among the more layered legacies that I've maybe covered in my time in sports, and, and that is that you know at his height he was maybe the best player. You could probably argue 
but he might have been the best player on planet Earth. And he was without a doubt the most electrifying player on planet Earth. And when he was in his prime, I was covering the Raptors for the Score Television Network. And every highlight pack was must-see TV. Like, forget the game. Like, you would watch highlight packs over and over again to see all the different looks on the things that he was doing. He was doing things that I had never seen before in my life, and it inspired an entire nation of Canadians to start picking up basketballs. And without Vince Carter, I don't know if the Raptors are able to evolve into the team that wins the championship with 7 million people watching across the country. Vince Carter laid the groundwork for all that. But with Vince Carter's legacy, you can't leave out the fact that he quit on his team. And he told people he quit on his team. He admitted that he told another team what play they were going to run to end the game. His numbers in his final season with Toronto and his numbers with New Jersey once he was traded tell you the story that you need to know about what Vince Carter did to get out of Toronto. And what Vince Carter to me is, is a guy who, if he had have had the work ethic and the self-awareness that wouldn't allow him to do things like I just talked about, he could have been one of the greatest basketball players of all time. He could have been Kobe Bryant. Yeah. Like Kobe Bryant and Vince Carter, if you look at the trajectories of their career early on, they match up. But Kobe had this Mamba mentality, and Kobe had this work ethic that wasn't going to allow him to ease back into whatever it was going to be. And Vince Carter, if you look at the career, 20 seasons, there's not a lot of winning basketball there. I mean, the most he ever won in Toronto was 48 games. This year's Raptors team, with I think 18 left to play before we put it on pause, had 47 wins. And that was a bunch of dudes cobbled together who were not first-round picks, who were some undrafted free agents. And they were one win away from the Raptors' glory years with Vince Carter. I think his legacy is twofold. If you want to remember one or the other, I'm not going to hate on you. But if you're a true basketball fan, if you're, if you're a true Raptors lover, you have to understand that his legacy is a little bit from column A, a little bit from column B. And wherever you want to focus on, I'm good with so do you think that at the end of the season, everything comes back? Uh, do you think Masai Ujiri will take some negative heat if he decides Vince Carter's number is a first to be retired in franchise history? Um, probably. I don't necessarily agree with it because I think a lot of that should you retire Vince Carter's number uh, began with uh, there was no one else. And now yeah. I think there are others. Uh, I think Vince's beloved um, reconciliation with the franchise will lead to that. But there are hardcores that have been around as long as I've been around that will hate that Vince Carter's number will go up to the rafters. And I understand that. But if you take a look at the big picture of all who follow the franchise, not a lot of people remember what happened on the way out. They just remember the highlights. And I'm cool with that too. Yeah, it should be interesting to see. Uh, once again, for those just joining us on Vibe 105, this is John Carlo Alino with a Sports Vibe Talk segment with the co-host of Tim and Sid, Tim McAuliffe. Uh, Tim, a lot of this whole pandemic has led to some people going and reminiscing about uh, memories from the past, a lot of throwback pictures going out online. You put one on Instagram of your days being a play-by-play -play announcer. Soul Patch Tim was there. <laughs> Just uh, how did that at the time like come about uh, as a play-by-play? -play? Was that something you wanted to do, or is that just like an opportunity that came up at the time? I was doing um, university football and basketball on the score, and the Hamilton Tiger Cats, I was, shoot, I don't even know how, I, how old I was. Uh, I think I was like 27, maybe 26 or 27 at the time. And uh, they had a Hall of Fame broadcast named Bob Bertina, who ended up being the mayor of Hamilton for a little while. Um, and there was a falling out and they were looking for something completely different and completely new from the old school CFL guy. So they decided to go young and I interviewed with them and I had a friend who was working there kind of set the, set the groundwork for me. So I, I, I ended up getting the job doing, uh, Hamilton Tiger Cats on the radio on CHML AM 900 and, uh, 
I did it for three years, but I was also doing the score at the same time. And it was basically, I was waking from the start of the CFL season around now till, you know, uh, late November, I was waking up working and going to bed working. Like it was just, there was, it was nonstop. And I was, you know, driving to Hamilton to go watch practice and then driving back to Toronto to go host score tonight or whatever I was doing. And then I was also doing OUA, uh, CIS football games on the weekends and trying to make it all work. And it just, it was too much. So I had to call it quits after three years, but it was awesome. I thoroughly enjoyed it. And the, the CFL, I feel like is one of the more slept upon uh, leagues in Canada and all of sports because it's a great league. It's full of really good people. And it's a shame that they're going to go through a very difficult year this year. And it's a shame that more people in the Toronto area don't appreciate uh, what, the CFL brings. And I know it's not the greatest football in the world. It probably has a better set of rules than the NFL. The best athletes are in the NFL. But if you yeah. just embrace the CFL for what it is, something uniquely Canadian, and listen, like, I love all sports. I love all football. If you like football, I don't understand how you can't enjoy watching any type of football, whether it's high school football. Like, we, we act like we're real sports fans in this city and in this country. And listen, 10,000 people show up to high school football games in the United States, right? Like, it's because they're there to support what is theirs. In Italy, they have a basketball league. People don't go because they think it's the greatest basketball in the world. They're there to support their own team. And I really, I, I really gained an appreciation for the CFL in my time working in it. And the athletes are way better than anyone gives them credit for. And the, the football is way better than a lot of people give it credit for. And if you're from Saskatchewan, you understand it, you love it, and you embrace it because it's your own. And I don't know why we don't do that in the rest of the country. Yeah, I agree there. Uh, Tim, before we wrap up here, uh, just a final question. Uh, you know, just reminiscing there, like the years that you took, like going score tonight, doing play by play, and uh, just that grind that it was. Now, when you're on Sportsnet, you're established yourself in uh, media and broadcasting. If you were to go in one day and see that young Tim McAuliffe from the score headline sports days, and he would see the Sportsnet Tim McAuliffe, what advice would you give to that young Tim McAuliffe? I would say enjoy every step because I, I think along the way, my focus was so intent on becoming the established guy that at times I forgot to just sit back and enjoy what I was doing. And we, I think we tend to do that in life where we're focused, especially goal-oriented people. You're focused on the end goal and you forget to you know, stop, sniff the roses and, and understand where you're at. So if, you're get, if you want to get into this business and... Some of my best stories are from the early days. The same can be said, like, SCORE produced a lot of people. Sitchik Shero, uh, Cabral Richards, uh, Renee Young with the WWE. Uh, yeah. I'm missing a ton of people. Basketball Jones, J.E. Skeets, Taz Mellis. Like, there are a ton of people that came through there. And I wish I had learned a little bit more from all of them and Adnan Virk. And I wish I had just taken the time to, to kind of understand where I was. And I did, but I wish I had done it a little bit more. Same with the CFL, same with that experience. I wish I had taken a little more time to uh, sniff the roses and make sure because, you know, the end goal isn't always the greatest. Um, and a lot of people find that their end goal will change as they grow older. So, you know, lose the focus a little bit on the end goal and enjoy what you're doing now because you never know that might have been the best time in your career. Yeah, that's great advice there, Tim. Uh, I'd like to thank you for sharing your time and coming on Vibe 105 to talk sports and broadcasting with me, especially during these times. And I wish you all the best. Yeah, you too, Giancarlo. And I know we had a little trouble uh, hooking up along the way. Uh, I appreciate your patience uh, with someone as stupid as I. But for all the listeners out there, uh, if you appreciated this interview, appreciate Giancarlo because he did not stop, even though I screwed him a couple times on being way too busy. But uh, I'm glad I stopped and sniffed the roses on this one, Giancarlo. Thank you for doing this with me. That was the co-host of Tim and Sid, Tim McAuliffe. Now we're going to send it back to the studio for more programming right here on Vibe 105. 